So I am going to talk to you about items that I don't like to source, items I don't like to pick up, but items that are bolos, items that you should be looking for. Don't be like me. Um, I'm not a big fan. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. And of breakables and things that are hard to ship. Wait until you see these bolos. These are going to come from the quiet thrifter. Let me uh, show you her eBay store. And then we're going to jump right into some big money bolos. This is the quiet thrifter. This is her eBay store. And I will link it down in the description of the video as well. And you can go and check out her other uh, items. She is not on YouTube. She just has an amazing eBay store. So go check her out. And we are going to look at some what solds. Uh, the first item is something I would pick up. So we are going to start with that one because I just love this. It's a 1988 vintage rare Sudley's shower blow mold elephant. It's a shower toy. How cool is this? Let me know in the comments, would you have picked up this elephant? I totally would have. It says, um, she went to an estate sale that was mostly very high-end things that were out of her price range. As she was leaving, empty-handed, she spotted this elephant, and it was under a table covered with dust. She said, I took it to the checkout, and they told me it was five bucks. I had no idea what it was, but it was weird and wonderful, which I love. She said it took a bit of research, but she figured out that it was basically a shower extension for kids. She said, I knew it might take a while to sell. So when a fair offer came along, I took it. Buyer paid shipping. This piece, along with the Department 56 Grace Lem piece, um, which was featured in another video I did, are perfect examples of why you should look under the tables. All right. So um, very, very cool elephant. Definitely, you guys all know that vintage blow molds are big money. The ones you put outside that light up and... Uh, Christmas time, Halloween, those are definitely a bolo. This is for your shower, so a little bit different. All right, here is, um, and she did take a best offer of $100 on that, which is super, super cool. $5 into $100 is great, and I bet she probably could have held out for more on that guy, but sometimes, you know, you know you've got five bucks in it, so it's like, I'm just going to take the best offer and move the inventory. Maybe. It's an MCM original art by Lee Burr. Um, ships at Sea Mystic. It, it's an oil drip painting. Let me see if I can zoom in here. And, you know, my husband picks up art all the time because he knows that some of it is super, super valuable. But he ends up uh, just hanging on to it and he hangs it in his office and he really likes old art. Me, on the other hand, I pick it up and it ends up being something just not worth anything. So I just have a tendency to stay away from it. But if you can learn it and know what to look for, there is definitely money to be made. She said, this MCM art piece that sold for $249 was bought off Facebook Marketplace for $30. She said, many people shy away from shipping big art. Yep, that's me. She said, but I've done really well with it. It is a pain to ship. Yes, but totally worth it. All right, so the next item is another art piece. This one is a, the Paul Goebel Native American piece was bought at a church fundraiser garage sale for $5. She said, when I bought it, I knew who the artist was immediately because he's also a children's book illustrator. She said she used to work for children's literacy nonprofit and worked with his publisher very closely. So his books were highly publicized during their online event. So when she saw the print, she knew immediately it was his work. She said she did not know the value. She just knew that it was his. She touched base with his publisher and asked if they recognized this piece. They did not, but they did say that it was his. Bottom line is she paid five bucks for it and sold it for $350. That is fantastic. Um, she said she took it to the UPS store and paid them to professionally pack it. So yeah. I, I can understand taking it to UPS and having them them package it. So right down there, you can see the um, the signature, but she just knew the artwork. So that's really, really fantastic there. 
All right. The next item is this Waterford Crystal Vase um, Eclipse, 13 inch, made in Ireland, 12 pounds, you guys. And it's from 2003. She said, came from a thrift store and was another item I just had good feels about. She said, I paid 30 and it took about two months to sell. It's highly breakable glass items. I always pack the inside of it for support and then double box it. It arrived safe and sound and the buyer was thrilled. Okay. So some shipping tips right there for us. This is a vintage Korean mink throw blanket, Asian style, Tiger Island. So let me see if I can get you right there is the tag and the back is red. And that's what it looks like. Um, I'm not sure if I would have picked this up or not. I have a tendency to stay away from throws and blankets and quilts, just like big things that I have to try to figure out how to photograph. But I have been doing quilts and blankets lately. So I am working on that. She said, um, just sold after being listed for four months. She said she took a low offer of 80 lower than she wanted, but she's still in the profit since she paid 25 for it. She said the buyer was so happy and grateful and that is important to her also. It came from a thrift store. The next item here is this European art nouveau. I think I got it right. <laughs> Twisted ceramic vase, Vilroy and Bach. Uh, this European European Art Nouveau vase was a fun victory. She said, I bought it at a thrift store for nine. I knew it was something special, but I didn't know what it was exactly. She said, I did quite a bit of research and got some help from one of the Facebook groups she belongs to. It was a stunning piece. She said she was sad to see it go, but glad it will be appreciated. It It, it is a vase and it sold for $150 on auction. Let me see. I don't think that this one was signed anywhere. Oh, just this right here. So interesting, right? Very cool piece. Going with your gut. The next item, she said, um, all of the amazing Fenton pieces I bought as a bulk deal from an estate sale. She paid between 30 and 40 per piece and took a few. they took a few months to sell. Most of them were the exclusive QVC pieces, so that raised their value. So we're going to look at this one and then a few more at the end of the video. Fenton, um, I feel like, you know, can be really good, but I also feel like it can be just bread and butter, but don't quote me on that. I feel like anytime I find Fenton, it, it's just okay. But these are really beautiful pieces that she got and they seem to be highly collectible. But uh, it's Mulberry Plum Blossom Basket and it is signed. I want to see if I could see the signature here. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's really, um, that's fancy there. It's numbered and everything. This next item is this creative co-op vintage Marian Angels image on decorative wood wall art. <laughs> and check this piece out. How amazing is that? Okay. It says, she said it was a garage sale fine. She paid $20 and she hung it in her home for a year before she decided to list it. She said it took about five months to sell and the $100 was the best offer that she accepted. Shipping art with no glass is so much easier. She said buyers always pay for shipping on all of her items. She said she almost never does free shipping. The next item here is this vintage MCM Viking Epic Loop drape swung glass base amberina swung base sold for 109.49 and it seems like these are really trending right now uh, i feel like i'm seeing them everywhere over on whatnot and different places um people are selling these really cool vases she said she got this 15 dollars at a garage sale she said she did a 10-day auction and the winning bid was for the 109 dollars and 49 cents and the buyer paid shipping she said, vintage glass is her jam. Me? I'm like, nope, not my jam. <laughs> All right. This is a brown drip. Vintage 1930s brush McCoy onyx brown drip glaze stoneware pottery lamp. If you find the brown drip, like the bowls and stuff, they are bread and butter. I learned that the hard way. Um, I know I, in the beginning when I started doing hard goods, the McCoy brown drip, I bought a whole table full at a garage sale. And I will say I sold almost, I think, I think I've almost sold every single piece and I made a profit on every single piece, but
but I was hoping they were going to be more special than they were. It was a lot of bread and butter and you guys know I don't like breakables. So it's just kind of a funny story to look back and, you know, see how much I have learned. But the brown drip, if you can find different and unique pieces like this lamp uh, base here, they can still do pretty well. She said this was a Goodwill score. She paid $7.99 for it and the buyer paid full asking price of $99 and it sold in less than a month. Buyer paid shipping. She said, P.S. Vintage lamps are also my jam. Yeah, she sells a ton of vintage lamps. Again, things I just would not want to ship. Okay, rare antique 1920s. Is that bunt? Candy jar, country store display glass. So super cool, fun piece here. Um, show you the top. And this one, she said she got at the Salvation Army thrift store, paid five or 15 and took a best offer of 75 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this amazing orange retro lamp she bought at the Habitat for Humanity restore of... Uh, for $12 and sold it for $91 on auction. Buyer paid shipping. Note, most of the lamps I sell, I sell with no shades for two, rate, two reasons. One, she's terrible at figuring out how shade looks best on the lamp. And two, lamps are way easier to ship without the shade. That's what I was going to say. How on earth would you ship the lampshade? All right. So it looks like they still do pretty good even without the shade. And a lot of times people are probably going to want to put their own shade on the lamp anyhow. All right. This three vintage Pyrex snowflake garland Cinderella mixing bowls. She said came from a thrift store and I may or may not have done the happy dance of Glee when I saw the whole set was marked at $18. Buyer paid full asking price and it sold in about two weeks. So these sold for $89 plus shipping. And if you guys have not seen my Pyrex video, Pyrex that sells in the thousands, go check out that video. Absolutely crazy. The next item here is this awesome lamp. Oh my goodness. I probably would have kept this one. It's a 1960s vintage MCM Lucite grape cluster lamp, pineapple tiki orange light. And she said she found this at a junk shop under a table and paid four bucks for it. She put it on 10-day auction and it sold for $93. And the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this emerald green Empoli. I think I said that right. Art glass vase pedestal optic vase ruffle edge. And again, she's got some great keywords. So if you check out her store, you can look at her titles and learn a lot on just different types of glass and how to uh, use those keywords. She said, came from a teeny tiny thrift store in an equally teeny tiny town. She paid 10, put it on a 10 day auction and the winning bid was $83 plus shipping. She said, I always try to plan my auctions to cover two weekends since buyers tend to be more active on the weekends. The next item here is this vintage art deco um, caramel swirl slag glass shade lamp with milk glass base. That is a lot of words. Okay. But great keywords. Look at how pretty that is. That is awesome. Um, she said she got this at a thrift store and she paid $4 for it. She said, again, I bought it knowing only that it was something cool and unique and worth taking a chance on. She put it on a 10 day auction and the winning bid was $87 plus shipping. She said, I boxed the shade in the base separately and put those boxes into a bigger box. Breakables always have a greater chance of making it to their destination when the pieces and parts aren't bumping together. That makes complete sense. And it's not super big, so that probably helped. Right here is an Art Pottery Raku. I'm not sure if I said that right. R-A-K-U. Vase centerpiece, iridescent glaze, unsigned. She said, thrift store. She paid up for it more than she usually would. She paid 30 and the buyer paid shipping. It sold in less than two weeks for $76. And again, it's just an unsigned, really cool piece. So sometimes when you just have an eye for cool things, you just know what to look for. This next item is a vintage ginger jar style brass and ceramic floral blue and white table lamp. And it says hat style lamp. 
was a Goodwill find. She paid $6.99 for it. It sold in under two weeks for a best offer of $63 and the buyer paid shipping. So there you go. All right, the next item she sold, all of these lamps. Can you believe it? And this one is cool. I probably would have had that as my first picture. The, it's uranium. So vintage Art Nueve, or no, wait, did I say it right? No, I said it wrong. Nuvo. I always want to say Nueve. <laughs> Nuvo. Vintage Art Nuvo Uranium Custard Glass Table Lamp. Um, she said it was a bit of a surprise. She's, I bought it at the Habitat for Humanity for four, and it sat in my profit pile for about six months before I discovered it and listed it on a 10-day auction. Winning bid was 70 and the buyer paid shipping. Nuvo. Nuvo. <laughs> I'm going to get it. One of these times, I'm just going to say it right the first time. Vintage MCM Original Watercolor Mushroom Art. Um, a lot of times, uh, I know there's some mushroom like canisters and different things like that that do pretty well also. Um, I've seen those on people's uh, pages on Facebook and stuff. But this is an art print and it is signed by Rodko. Constantine Rodko. She said... Bought at a thrift store for $4 and took a best offer of $85. Buyer paid shipping. Okay, we are going to look at some more of the Fenton items here. Let's see. Oh, on the elephant, she did take a best offer on the elephant for $100. So, okay. Here is the first Fenton. She said the six Fenton pieces were part of a bulk buy. The cost, average cost was, I think she said, between 30 and 40. She said this one, the Cranberry Mary Gregory vase, was a best offer of 100 that she accepted. The green basket sold for 75, best offer. See, I would be terrified to ship that. So these are really, really uh, original tags, really nice pieces. This piece here, let's see, the light green vase says best offer of 75. I'm just going to show you. These are all Fenton. This is a pink Burmese. I think that's how you say it. She said she took a best offer of 70 on that one. This is a vintage MCM Epoli, Epoli? Empoli, Empoli style teardrop smoky olive glass table lamp. Very cool. She got this for six bucks at a thrift store and it sold for, I believe, 89 there. Here's another uh, Fenton Wavecrest hand painted pink lidded jar vanity jar signed Sue Jackson. She took a best offer of 45 on that one. And then this one is a Fenton 2001 Centennial Collection. Oh, Aubergine, Aubergine. Purple Peacock Vase, Bridget, or I'm sorry, K Brightbill. That one, a best offer of 75 buyer paid shipping on all those pieces. And I think that is it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to go down below and check out The Quiet Thrifter on eBay. If you click that little heart once you're on eBay, that will allow you to follow her store and then you will get updates when she lists new items. So thank you all so much for being here. There's gonna be some videos popping up here, here and a subscribe and another uh, video down below. I'd love for you to watch a video and subscribe if you have not already. And thanks for watching.